the principle of moments. And I want us to consider the following. I want us to consider this bar here, which is being balanced by several forces. This is to help you understand the principle of moment so that we don't just state it, but you know where we are getting it from. So here we consider this bar. There is a fixed point here. This is our pivot or what we are calling the fulcrum of this point here. So this is what we have. Now, we want to apply forces on all sides of this bar here. Now, we can start with a force at this point here. So if we apply a force, we can call it force. We can call this force F1. The distance from the pivot to force F1, we can call it D1. So these letters are studying for values, certain values. So if we have this distance, we can call it distance D1. Now that is one force which is bringing about a turning effect on that bar. Now, if we have this single force on this side of the pivot, if it is applied, how will this bar, we are calling this our bar, how will this bar turn? In which direction? Is it clockwise or anticlockwise? So if it is only this force, then we are going to have it turn this way. So which direction is this? This is clockwise direction. So it's going to bring about clockwise moment. So I want you to make note of that. So if we were to calculate moment for this force, we are going to calculate it as follows. So the moment will be equal to the force which is F1 multiplied by the distance which is D1 which will give us F1 D1. So that's what we have and we have seen that this is a clockwise moment. So this is clockwise because if we have this single force, it's going to make the bar turn in a clockwise direction. Now let's say we have another force on this other end. Let's see what will happen. So if we have another force, we can even have it at this point. So we are having it towards the left side of the pivot, down one. So if we have another force here, we can call it force F2, force F2. And therefore the distance from this force F2, the perpendicular distance from F2 to the pivot, this distance, This distance, we can have it as D2. So we have distance D2 there. Now, assuming that we have only that single force, F2, being applied on this bar. So here we have the pivot, somewhere here. And then we have a force F2 being applied. How will it turn? It turns in this way. So it will turn in this direction, and that direction is anticlockwise. So it will bring about clockwise. It brings about anticlockwise moment. So we, if we come now and calculate the moment there, we are going to have the moment given by F2 multiplied by the distance d2 which is going to be f2 d2 and we have seen that that moment is anticlockwise. clockwise 
So we need to make note of that, that this is anti-clockwise. So this moment F2D2 is anti-clockwise, whereas moment F1D1 is clockwise. Now if we add some more forces, we can add some more forces on the upper side. We can, for example, add another force at this point here. If we have another force here, we can call it force F3 because we have F1, F2, we can put F3. So if we have force F3 here and the distance from the force, that is the line of action to the point of support, let's say our distance is D3. This distance from here up to here, we call it D3. Now, if we have such a bar and we have a force, this is what we have. Here is the pivot. So if we apply an upward force at this point here, how will it turn? So you can see how it turns. Which direction is this? It will turn in and clockwise direction. So it turns in and clockwise direction this way in and clockwise direction so we can say this is and clockwise this and clockwise so we need to uh, make note of that finally we can add another upward force on this other side so we can add the force somewhere here so if we have the force here we can now call it f4 since we have F3, F1, F2, so this is our F4, and the distance, we can call it D4. This distance is D4. Before we calculate or before we state that whether it is clockwise or unclockwise, we need to note that with F3, D3, as our moment, we need to come and note it down here. The other moment that we have been able to get, the moment brought about by this force F3 is going to be given by F3. Force is a capital letter F. F3 multiplied by D3, which is F3 D3. And we have seen that it is anticlockwise. So we need to know that this one is anti-clockwise. And finally, we are having another moment, moment being given by force F4, D4. So we have F4, D4. So we also need to ask ourselves, is it going to bring about clockwise moment or anti-clockwise moment. So when you consider that we have the pivot here and we are applying force in this direction, as you can see, how is the bar turning? It is turning in this direction and that is clockwise direction. So we have this other one in clockwise direction. So this is clockwise. So our moment here is clockwise.